everybody and welcome back from your coffee break. I hope you're all caffeinated now and ready for the next session. Uh, again, we'll be joining Dr. Dalia al bukli and this session is called uh, the D-Bibre, Simplifying Class 2 Treatment. And this is Dalia's bonded inclined bite razors with elastics, which is a technique she has developed. And I'm going to leave you with her now and she will present this to you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Go ahead. Class 2 malocclusion is one of the most common problems in orthodontic practice. It amounts to 15 to 30 percent in the different populations. The treatment of skeletal class 2 in children is either done by removable functional appliances or fixed functional appliances. If these don't work, we always can treat class 2 using camouflage or orthognathic surgery. Removable functionals comprise the activator, bionator, frankel, and twin block. But we have a big problem with compliance with our young patients. As for fixed functionals, we have a variety. We can use the forces, the herbs, the Jasper jumper, the advanced sink, or the twin force. But they are both bulky and expensive. Fixed functionals can also cause cheek irritation, and they are liable to breakage. So let me tell you about the origin of the D-Bibri. One day I was placing a bite plane on one of my patients and that patient was slightly class two. All of a sudden I asked the patient to bite down and the patient, instead of biting in his centric occlusion, he slid his mandible forward into a class one position. So what I did was I took out my handpiece and I made a ramp or an inclined plane in the bite plane. The next visit, the patient came and he was class one. But some teeth, as you know, have flat cusps. So I had to place really bulky bite razors and these are liable to break. So I started modifying the idea and instead I made two opposing bite razors instead of one. As you can see here, an upper and a lower one with a bevel between them. So the idea is to create bilateral simultaneous interferences using upper and lower inclined bite razors, which means deflective occlusal contacts, so that when the patient bites, occlusal prematurities are created, forcing the patient to slide slightly forwards along the inclined ramps into a bite of comfort. And I started reinforcing the forward slide, which is only two millimeters with light class two elastics. So this is the initial class two case. And here I created the occlusal interference. And now the patient 
is biting forwards into a bite of comfort. Now, I started placing the bite planes or the bite razor differently according to the facial skeleton of each patient. In vertical growers, I like to place them on the posterior teeth to encourage intrusion of the molars and the anti-clockwise rotation of the mandible. Whereas in more horizontal growers, I like to place them more anteriorly in the premolar region to enhance bite opening and increase the lower face height. So really the idea of the debibri is coming from the deflective occlusal contacts that result in mild functional shifts and I apply it in a similar way to a twin block. But in this case, it's a mini bonded twin block. So I guess this is a marriage that gave the debibri. As for the adjustments and follow-ups, I see my patients every four to six weeks as usual. Uh, if the bike brazers uh, were worn or debonded, I replaced them. I measured the overjet and checked the canine relation in CR. If CR coincides with maximum intercuspation, then I activate the debibri by slight addition to the ramps for another two millimeter forward slide until I achieve normal overjet. Usually I place the debibri for a minimum of six months. Once I'm in class one cuspid, I start reducing the height of the bite razors gradually, allowing for the eruption of the posterior teeth into a class one occlusion. Sometimes I might just remove the upper or the lower component completely. Then I wait one month after I remove them to make sure that the bite is stable. It's always a good idea to stabilize the correction using settling elastics for a few weeks. And here is a case, class two half unit, molar and canine. The debibri in place, causing the prematurities. And this is the patient after treatment. Another case. This is how class one is achieved. So what are the advantages of the debibri? The debibri is unobtrusive. It does not interfere with speech like other major functional appliances. It doesn't irritate the cheeks. It is easily accepted by the patients and it is self-cleansing. It's inexpensive. It's easy to fabricate and replace. It uses the patient's own biting force rather than a tooth-borne uh, appliance. So you don't have a piston mechanism or a spring mechanism, as with most fixed functionals. It results in disclusion, which facilitates the AP or the anthroposterior correction by using intermaxillary elastics. It also removes the effect of the intercuspation that may impede, or sometimes may impede, forward mandibular growth. The position of the debris can be customized, like I mentioned before, to help the correction of open bite or deep bites. Uh, the debris allows for the assessment of the sagittal correction each visit, unlike with some functional appliances. Uh, also, the debris can be placed at the beginning of fixed appliance treatment, un unlike fixed functions, which require that uh, require at least six months of leveling until we can place them on heavy wires. The amount of mandibular advancement is slight, only two millimeters. And I make the uh, activation in a gradual manner so that the lateral pterygoids are not strained. 
so there is a better chance for the patient to maintain this position 24-7. Uh, since the amount of slide is only two millimeters, the anterior component of force is much less than when we use activators or functional appliances. So I assume I'm, I should be getting less lower incisor proclination. Sometimes I use low torque brackets on the lower incisors, high torque brackets on the upper incisors, if I'm worried about such um, drawback while I'm using the class two elastics. What are the contraindications of the debivery? Uh, we can hear you, Dalia, but uh, uh, we can see your screen. Can you see my screen? No, you need to share your screen. Okay. I, I... I'm trying to share it now. Okay. Yeah, we can see it now. Okay. Thank you. So what are the contraindications of the debivery? You won't be able to use it with a patient that uh, is bruxing on, on their teeth because they would break. Uh, also patients who have crowns and maybe on some TMD patients. However, we all know that occlusal interferences could be a contributing factor in some TMD this or TMG disorders as they may encourage bruxism. However, the forward positioning that is obtained with the debivery is similar to that with an ARS or anterior repositioning splint. So maybe a TMD patient can tolerate a debivery. So now I'm going to show you some case examples. This is case number one. She's 11 years old and her chief complaint was upper protrusion. Her molars and canines were class two half unit. She had an overjet of five millimeters. She had an A and B of eight degrees and her mandibular plate angle was 35 degrees. So I opted to place the debris on the molars and actually, this was my first trial with the debivery. I made it indirectly using glass ionomer cement. And this is the patient with the debivery in place. Sorry, on her so, sorry Dr. Dalia, I am um, I, I slightly intervening your space, but I just want to have a, a, ask a question. Why do you call it debivery? Maybe I, I lost that. Okay, uh, D for Dalia. <laughs> Uh, B for bonded, I for inclined, uh, uh, by tracers, uh, BR, with elastics. That's amazing. And actually, I love acronym. Okay, thank you so much. Thank okay, you. go ahead. I'm very sorry. Okay. So this is a video of my first patient. And here is my patient, six months with the debivery. You can see I'm already in class one occlusion, both canine and molar. And here she is after treatment. And this is her before and after. 
Her superimposition super showed that her S and B went up from 78 to 81 degrees. Her A and B went down four degrees. Her upper uh, incisor inclination or upper one to SN uh, actually increased three degrees and the lower incisor to mandibular plane increased uh, by five degrees. This is another patient. She's a bit older, 13 years old. Uh, her chief complaint was upper protrusion. She had uh, molars class two and canine um, class two, two third of a unit. And she had an overjet of eight millimeters. Here is the debiber or the debibri in place. And here she is one year later. And you can see a significant improvement in her profile. Again, superimposition shows that the SMB went up two degrees, A and B went down four degrees. Uh, again, the upper incisors uh, angulation increased as well as the lower incisor angulation. So I got some more flaring of her lower incisors. Case number three, again, class two case, the bibri in place with the elastics and the slide. Sorry to interrupt Dr. Dali. Can you just go back one, one, one slide, yeah. One more or? One more, just extra. And just because the people, they are falling asleep. What she's wearing, is she's part of ninja thing, ninja team or karate or something? No. Okay, okay, thank, thank you. I should have asked her to remove it, but uh, I didn't want to upset her. <laughs> well, actually, it's a fantastic thing because uh, it's just tuck the, ha the hand, the hair behind the ear. Yeah. And Thank you. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. You know, I just have some silly sense of humor. Okay, so here is my patient. After correction, you can see the difference in the class two canine relationship from two thirds of a unit to class one. And now I've already reduced her debibri. And here she is after deboning. So you can see the gradual change that happened in her case. Again, her profile improved. As for the superimpositions, uh, her S and A went down, her S and B stayed the same. Uh, the A and B went down about 2.5 degrees. I'm sorry, 1.5 degrees. And the lower incisor to mandibular plane increased only one degree. Here is another patient that's still in treatment, but I'm showing her because she had a full unit class two and she had an overjet of about nine millimeters. This is her tracing. Her upper incisors were quite flared as well as her lower ones. And she had a mandibular plane angle of 38 degrees, A and B of six degrees. This is a video of her biting into the debibri with the short elastics. After a while, the forward slide becomes learned and the patient usually bites in a forward position. So she starts to learn to avoid to hit the, the debibri, the, she won't be hitting on the, on the prematurities. She would just slide forward. And here is my patient with the debibri and the elastics and only 14 months in treatment. We are almost class one on the right side and rigid class one on the left side. And this is the profile change so far. Superimposition showed that the SMB increased by one degree, A and B went down by one degree. The upper incisor angulation maybe was responsible for the soft tissue 
improvement in her profile. Uh, it went down considerably. Uh, the lower incisors actually were not flared in her case, maybe because I used low torque brackets on her lower incisors. So I know many of you are going to ask me how to construct a debibbery. Well, I used to make it either direct, direct in the mouth, like, well, for example, when you place uh, regular bite razors, or sometimes I use a wax bite and I trim the wax bite in the area where I will place the debibbery. So the patient using the wax bite is biting two millimeters forward. Uh, or you can just do, do it indirectly, like I first started doing it using an articulator after getting um, an advancement bite with wax, um, but only two millimeters, like I said before. And then you can transfer the um, bite razors to the patient's mouth, just like you do with at attachments using a transfer tray. Well, that's it. So uh, I'm ready to answer any questions if you like. I 